everybody, so today's video is going to be tape and extension placement. I have gotten this video requested so many times. I've done a few extension videos, but they've all been intertwined with color. So this video is going to strictly focus on tape, tape placement and blending. So I'm actually going to be doing a lot of extension videos over the next few months. I have some fun ideas for you guys. So this is her hair before. We just gave her a fresh color. We color matched her extensions. This is the hair that we're going to be using. It's a beautiful color. It's gonna match her perfect. We're so excited. So if you are interested in watching how I place tape in, stay tuned. Okay, so I always start in the back of the head and brick lay upwards. So right here I'm starting in the center at the nape of the neck and it's very important to take any loose hairs that aren't actually sticking to the extension and pin them back like I just did because any loose hairs trapped in between the two sandwiches is going to cause breakage and slipping. Okay, and my next section up is actually on an angle, and this is just going to make sure that it lays very naturally forward because those corners are really tricky and we don't want to just put a straight extension there, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do it on an angle right here and then on an angle on the other side as well. And now that those three pieces are placed, you can see right here we have begun to form our sectioning and our placement. But as you can see, we have holes and we have gaps. So it's really nice though because now that we have those three pieces in, we can start to see where we need our next one. So I'm just working my way up bricklaying again and I'm doing it in between those two sandwiches to fill in that gap and as you can see it kind of helps fill it in. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and I'm just working my way up filling in all the gaps. I really like to utilize angling in all of my sections. I just have a few parts that I like to use angles. The first was towards the bottom of the head like you saw before and the second is right here. And you will see me use angles in a few other sections as we work our way up her head. But angles are nice because it allows your client to wear their hair up. It allows the hair to lay a little more naturally and they can kind of move it around rather than it just being on a straight placement. Angles help your client feel more comfortable if that makes sense and it helps the look look more natural. Okay, and now we're working our way to the front of the head and it's very important to connect the back with the front. So I always make sure I fill in these corners behind the ear because if you don't connect the back to the front, it's gonna look really weird and it's not gonna look blended. So my first piece is right behind the ear and as you can see, I'm just layering it right there and then I'm just gonna continue to bricklay from that piece forward. And as soon as I get that one piece behind the ear in, I also like to do another angle backwards above it. And that way it covers a little bit towards the front and a little bit towards the back. Since it's on an angle, it'll kind of go either way and help fill in any gaps.
Okay, and when I say bricklay, I mean that each extension needs to overlap the other one just by a little bit. So as you can see, I figured out where my last exten extension was placed, and now I'm just going to place the other one a little bit higher and a little bit overlaid. We don't want any space in between them because that's going to cause a gap and a separation, but if they are always like kind of covering each other a little bit, it's gonna blend really smoothly and make sure that there's no gaps. I hope that makes sense, but you, look, as you can see right here, it kind of flows together, and this is what makes it look really blended. <laughs> And now that I have those two pieces in, I'm just going to go right above those two pieces centered and place one right there. Okay, and now our angles are coming into play again. I love using angles around the face. A lot of clients always ask, can I wear my hair up with tape ends? And the answer is yes, if they are placed correctly. So since I'm placing it on an angle, if she were to pull her hair up or back, that angle is going to allow the hair to go with where she's pulling it up, if that makes sense. It's just a little more um, user-friendly. It's easier for the client to put their hair up if it's on, on an angle because it's laying on a natural part rather than just being straightforward. It's really hard to put it back if it's just straightforward. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my head, but I never know if it makes sense when I'm talking. So yeah, I'm gonna do that angle, and then I have another one right here, and this one's just centered to fill in any gaps as well, and then I will do one more angle around her face. And make sure you don't place it too close to the client's face unless they ask for that. Some clients want them close to fill in any breakage they may have, but if they like to wear their hair up, make sure you place it far enough back where they're still able to. We gotta have our so delicious. It's right next door and we get drinks every day, so don't mind us. <laughs> so now I am working my way to the other side of the head and I'm just doing the exact same thing, but I kind of um, took the camera a little further away so that you guys can see it from a further distance and you can really see where I place them. So hopefully that helps. Um, it's kind of confusing when you first do this because there's so many pieces of hair and I feel like so many people get overwhelmed. But honestly, once you have this down, it's so simple and so easy, and you will love doing tape ins.
Okay, and now that the general placement is done, I just go around her head and see where I need any more tape-ins. I have a few pieces left, so this is where I like to just evaluate her hair and see where I need to place a little bit more. Okay, and if tapins are something that you still struggle with or if this video didn't make sense to you, I have created a map and this is just a general placement guide and it's the back of the head, the right side of the head, and the left side of the head. And this is just a general placement, like I said. You can get this started with any client and then you can go back through and see where they need them. But I have found that this placement works pretty much for everyone and it's a really good placement for tapins no matter what kind of hair they have. So if you feel like this map would help you, go ahead and screenshot because I really feel like this helped me a lot when I was first learning and it's really helpful to just kind of get a placement guide. Okay, and I tell everybody when it comes to extensions, I have three golden rules. The first is that they are placed correctly, which we just went over. The second is that the client has enough hair. You don't want a client who's like, okay, I want a long, thick, full head of extensions, but I only want to buy one bag of tapins. That's not necessarily going to work. You need to make sure that the client knows how much hair they need to achieve the look they are going for. Yes, it's a little expensive up front. It's an investment, but if they want that hair, they've got to be willing to buy all three or four bags or however many bags they may need. Most clients only need two to three per um, head of full head of extensions, but my mom here needed three and that's what we did and it looked amazing. So that's my second rule is that they have enough hair. And then the third rule is blending. Blending is key to making sure that your extensions look natural, blended, and beautiful. So I start off by doing the baseline, just working my way around the head, giving her the length that she's going for. And then I point cut a little bit to make the ends look a little more natural. These extensions are very thick towards the ends, which is great, but point cutting helps break them up a little bit. And then I like to go through and slide cut around the face and I always angle from her shorter layer down. I don't cut any of her own hair, but I use her hair as a guideline. And then I just kind of slither my way down, creating layers in the hair so that it blends very naturally with her own hair. And then I also like to do that in the back of the head. You'll see me do that here in a minute, but slide cutting towards her shortest layer down really helps it blend very naturally.
At least 30 years younger. Oh, at least. Do you love it? Yes, I love it. Okay, you guys, we are all done with her hair. Look how amazing it looks. It turned out beautiful. The color match is perfect. This hair is so soft and luxurious. We used three bags of tape-ins, and now she has princess mermaid hair. And this is my beautiful mom, and she is the best model ever. And she didn't want to keep it this long, but I kind of made her keep it this long. What do you guys think? Should she go shorter or keep it long? I think it's cute. Um, so if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And speaking of extensions, I have an exciting announcement coming your way Saturday. So four more days, keep your eyes peeled for that. Actually, by the time this video goes up, it could be two or three days. But keep your eyes open Saturday, May 27th. I will be announcing something very exciting. And I'm just gonna give you one clue. Let down your hair.